Hello, my name is Nati Shalom. I'm the CTO and founder of Cloudify. Uh, with me, Jacob Serling, a senior developer. And today we're going to talk about uh, adding infrastructure provisioning to Backstage. Uh, we're going to walk us through uh, the following agenda uh, as part of this uh, discussion. Uh, and hopefully uh, you're going to get uh, a lot of good information about uh, both Backstage and how do we turn it into a full-blown pass. Uh, we're going to start with a problem statement, uh, the speed paradox uh, specifically, and then we're going to talk about uh, the introduction into Backstage itself, what it provides, why do we need it, uh, how does it work, and we'll see even a live demo of that. Uh, then we're going to work through the integration with Cloudify as a provision and execution engine and how we plug it into Backstage itself, and uh, hopefully uh, once we finish that you'll get a good handle of the uh, topic. Let's start with the problem statement. Uh, so basically when we're talking about uh, uh, the DevOps tool chain as it is right now, we all experiencing the fact that the DevOps tool chain is becoming fairly bloated and it's continuously growing in a very rapid space. Uh, the problem is not unique to if you like uh, small companies or even large companies. We can even see the rock star of the uh, DevOps, if you like, the Spotify and others uh, facing that same challenge. Uh, Spotify have done a very nice thing, which uh, they actually created an open source project to address that problem. Uh, that open source project is called Backstage, which is basically a way for developers to organize all the resources and all the tools in one place. It's a kind of a, co a content management system, but very targeted to developers. So it adds things like reference to Git, reference to APIs and things of that line. I'll talk more about it later on. Uh, First, I wanted to start with why is that becoming a hot topic today and how is that different than previous generation of platform as a service like Heroku, Google App Engine, and things of that line. Um, so if you recall, and those who are familiar with Google App Engine and, and Heroku and uh, Cloud Foundry uh, at the time, uh, it was really targeting the same problem, providing a simple interface for developers to uh, manage their uh, development uh, cycle. The problem is it was very opinionated type of environments, which means that every time that I needed to do customization or change things to work for my environments uh, and for my organization, I had to be dependent on the vendor itself. And obviously that didn't scale. So what changed? Uh, I think we have a, a, a new set of building blocks in this sort of Kubernetes, Terraform, uh, CloudFormation and other tools that are there. And a lot of the infrastructure is now being already automated that really creates a very strong substrate that really allows us to build this new generation of platform that is much more flexible. Flexible to the point where I can actually create a very easily a custom version of the platform as a service that fits specifically to my organization as Kesley Highwater uh, mentioned in his uh, uh, tweet here uh, that you could see here. So without further ado, let's start with introduction into Backstage. So as I mentioned in the beginning, uh, Backstage itself uh, was uh, created by Spotify and it's an open source project. So now it's not only managed by Spotify, there is an actually a very uh, growing and uh, lives uh, ecosystem behind it. And as an open source project, what it provides is really a single point of access for developer to access all the resources. What does it actually mean? Uh, there is basically three main components that Backstage is built on. Uh, one of them is uh, this web front end, uh, which allows you to put all of those resources in one, in one page or one API. Uh, it, on the left hand side, we can see the service definition, which is the way for us to introduce new plugins and new resources into Backstage itself. And one of the main thing that Backstage really is powerful of is its flexibility to plug into many resources. The service definition is actually based on the Kubernetes template, uh, which is a fairly common and known language to many DevOps uh, users. So uh, the fact that it's built on, on Kubernetes is, makes it easier for people to actually understand and write things themselves. On the right hand side, uh, you can see the list of plugins and, that's, uh, and we'll walk through that very quickly. Uh, but you could see that you could actually create a fairly nice uh, resources that you don't even need to deal with the templates or service definition. There's a lot of those integration that comes out of the box. Uh, this is just a, a way to see how uh, uh, such a backstage environment would look like. So for example, we can organize our development KPIs, our squad performance, uh, the relevant pipelines that we want to monitor uh, in one place. 
Uh, it also provides a, a content management system, so we can also organize our documentation in one place. And it's very uh, oriented towards our service, so we can organize all the information that is relevant for our service in one place, as opposed to getting access to Git or getting access to CICD and getting access to all those subsystems that we have right now, but we never have a 360 a 360 degree uh, of uh, the view of the service itself and all the resources that are around it. And that's the problem that, uh, uh, that Backstead is trying to see. With that, let's uh, go to a live demo. Uh, I installed a Backstage here and uh, we can see a vanilla Backstage and what it comes from. Uh, so what we can see is a basic catalog which comes with a few software stack that are available as, as an out of the box uh, type of experience. Um, as we'll browse through those uh, software components, we can see things like Postgres. Uh, we can see in the tab that we can see uh, the type of, of those resources over there, our system, who is the owner of that, the type of the service, whether it's a service, whether it's a library, the life cycle, whether it's still in development or it's already uh, mature enough to be in production. And if we click in, we can see more information about the API that it uses in its relationship. We can also see uh, the, uh, the links that are associated with that service. So if we have uh, you know, documentation and other things, it's one place to organize all the relevant information for us uh, in that context. On the left-hand side, we can see the pages that are listed here, and we can also customize that. So the default pages include docs, for example. Uh, as you would see in the docs, uh, right now the default docs that you will find is the backstage documentation. Uh, as we will browse through the backstage documentation, it just gives you a sense of the flexibility of the system itself. So it's not just organizing API and software resources, it really allows you to write documentation, which is something that you would do with Confluence. Uh, but in this case, you could actually do it from within backstage. Uh, and this is the, if you like, the stronger uh, part of, of backstage, it's this plugin architecture. You could see as we'll browse to that, there is a, already a long list of uh, plugins that are available through the ecosystem itself. Uh, you could see a Lambda service uh, plugin, an AWS CloudFormation plugin, uh, a CACD plugin like Circle CI, and they're all contributed not just by Spotify, but by uh, many different companies that are uh, already using the back backstage and integrating into their system. And that's pretty powerful in my view. So let's move into the next part. So we've learned what Backstage is, uh, we've learned how we integrate with that, and we even played a little bit with the vanilla integration of that. Now we're getting to the main topic of this discussion, which is how do we create a provisioning uh, integration into Backstage itself. So as we've seen, Backstage itself is more, if, uh, if you like, a, 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 a single point of access to a lot of resources, and it's really, if you like, a rich uh, content management system. Uh, but if we want to turn it into a full platform as a service, we also need to add provisioning. And this is where exactly uh, Cloudify comes in. So think about Cloudify as a remote execution engine uh, that allows you to take resources from CloudFormation, from Terraform, from, uh, from Kubernetes and create environments that are basically built out of those resources. For example, we can have a development environment based on Kubernetes and database like RDS, and similarly the development, the, the production environment. Uh, one of the things that we've done with Cloudify is really make it very easily accessible uh, through this uh, single point of API where we can integrate with CACD tools which in a single call can create a full-blown environment and similarly with ITSM tools. And that uh, actually makes the integration with Spotify very intuitive because it really fits that model of API integration. Uh, so if we look at the approach that we've taken to integrate Cloudify into Backstage, we're basically looking into something like that. Cloudify, uh, 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 sorry, Backstage is actually using a Git repository to manage its software component. As I mentioned earlier, the software components are, are, are written in a Kubernetes language. Uh, so the way for us to export the uh, uh, certified environment that we're managing, basically the, the, the development production environment into Backstage would be to read and scan the uh, resources that are already being managed and uh, export them into the Git repo in this Kubernetes format. And that's the integration uh, that we've done on that regard. Further to that, uh, if we want to enable provisioning from that type of environments, we'll see how that works and uh, we'll have a live demo that actually shows that. 
Uh, it's also important to see that it, it provides a, a good separation between, if you like, the DevOps view of the world and the developer view of the world. Backstage is really targeted for developers and it provides a very abstract view of those services where DevOps team would need much deeper integration and logging and other things, both to develop those services and also to uh, uh, manage them after they've been executed and troubleshoot things when things goes wrong. So the separation between Cloudify and Backstage really provides that dual view where in one place Cloudify really facing the DevOps of the world, where Backstage provides a much more abstract view for, that is targeted for developers. So it also creates that nice separation between the different personas within the, the, the teams themselves. Now let's see it live rather than talking about it. Um, so what we're going to see is an example of a development environment that is based on Kubernetes, database and network and storage. Uh, we're going to have two versions of that environment. One of them is for a developer, which is going to run on a single VM using Minikube. Uh, we're going to have a single uh, Postgres database and a single uh, storage using MinIO and a simple VPC. Where in a production, we're going to use the same stack, but a managed stack, obviously, for that is optimized for redundancy. Uh, we're going to see how we uh, take this in this uh, uh, certified environment that we created, our DevOps team have created for our development team, and how we export that automatically into Backstage. And then how a developer see that and how a developer execute uh, this type of environments from within Backstage. Let's go. Uh, so we're going to start with uh, step number one, which is creating the Backstage environment, which already have the, the Cloudify integration in place. Uh, what we're seeing here right now is a provision version. I'm going to skip that phase for the sake of time, uh, which already include this, uh, the, the, the Backstage uh, uh, stack. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, the Backstage stack in itself is a development environment, or in this case, an, an environment, and it includes the Backstage portal, and it includes a database. Uh, in addition to that, we also added an instance of Cloudify, a specific instance of Cloudify that will be attached to that type of environments, and we also have the, the synchronization service that monitors the environments on Cloudify and synchronize it into the Git repo of Backstage itself so that those two systems will be completely in sync. The next step will actually uh, uh, create, uh, uh, we'll see how uh, this uh, synchronization happens uh, and how we can actually list the environments from within Cloudify into Backstage. So in this case, uh, we're going to see the certified environment that we already uploaded into Cloudify itself. So let's see this type of environment. We can see here the catalog in Cloudify. We can see that we have um, EKS, AKS, Postgres, SQL, uh, and in both Azure and AWS, uh, Mineo, S3, all the services that we need to create our development and production environment running and already imported into Cloudify itself. The next thing would be to switch over to Backstage. And what we expect to see is to see this exact same stack listed in, uh, uh, in Backstage without us having to do any manual integration. And that's exactly what we're going to do. So we're going to filter the resources, the software resources in, in uh, Backstage with the Cloudify tags. So as we import them, we add the Cloudify tags so that we can filter them. And you can see the exact same list that I showed you on the Cloudify portal now listed in Backstage itself. The next step would be to provision those services. Uh, and that's uh, uh, the next step that we're going to see. So now a developer see the list of software component in the Backstage format on its own Backstage environment and is going to click a button here and provision that uh, environments through Cloudify. So we clicked on that service and we can see the links uh, that we added to that service definition, which uh, provide a shortcut of that specific service provisioning data into Cloudify itself. So it doesn't have to browse through the other uh, type of deployment to get direct access to the specific deployment that is selected. And that shortcut uh, then allows us to continue the, 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 the provisioning part from Cloudify. So we can see the inputs that we can select here. Uh, for example, time to live, how long that environment needs to run, uh, obviously the cloud and the region, other things that uh, has been uh, associated with that. Now we can see the actual provisioning progress. Uh, that's going to generate a workflow and we can start and see the progress of that workflow turning from uh, uh, white to uh, uh, yellow to green as uh, it marks its progression. Uh, so with that, I think we got uh, the full cycle of provisioning also covered uh, in these uh, environments. Now we're going to uh, browse the system. Sorry about that. 
And I think that's a, that's a good time to wrap up. Uh, so we got, uh, from what we've seen so far, we've seen the basic ba backstage uh, basics and how it provides a very rich and flexible, and the key uh, word here is flexibility here. It's the ability to really plug in a lot of resources of different kinds, monitoring, API, documentation, Git integration, pipelines, all in one place. Uh, we've seen how we can even use Cloudify to provision a backstage environment in a single command. So it simplified that part, which is, uh, we haven't seen a live part of that because it's pretty straightforward. And we also saw how we can add Cloudify as a provisioning and execution engine into Backstage itself and how easy that is. As I mentioned earlier, we're using the uh, Backstage uh, Git repo as, the, if you like, the central point of synchronization. And we have a process to actually synchronize uh, Cloudify resources and the certified environment into that. I also mentioned that it provides that dual view where we have a detailed view through Cloudify facing DevOps team and we have the backstage facing the development team. We also seen how developers can easily pick and select a software component or a service like a development environment that I mentioned and provision this type of environment. And with that, I wanted to thank you all uh, for uh, participating in this and listening through uh, this point. And thank you very much. Uh, if there are questions or resources that you would want to see, uh, you're more than welcome to actually uh, log into Cloudify and see. Thank you very much.